Hello, Sierra. We're going to take a look at your five characteristics of light. I'll um, offer you some of my observations, tell you what I think. And uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. Go ahead and uh, screen share here. There you go. And move, uh, move this over. Okay, so we'll start off. I'll just sort of give a kind of take an uh, overview look of, of what you have here. Um, basically, I'm, I'm looking to see that you've posted everything, uh, whether you've got all five characteristics up there. Uh, did you put them in the order that you would typically do them in, which is the D-I-T-C-H order, direction would always come first, since it is the, uh, the point at which you would establish where the key light is. And so you would do that first. So direction comes first. So that should 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 be the order in which these uh, these are placed. So looks like you got intensity, temperature. Uh, yeah, looks pretty good so far. Temperature, contrast, and and hardness. Great. And I really appreciate that you have. Uh, Label them with more detail. I, I didn't fully ask for uh, for for that, but uh, I do appreciate that that you went ahead and said, "Hey, this is fill light diffused," and "Oh, hey, this is another fill light diffused." Uh, it tells me something. Now, I if if you go and look at some of the other uh, uh, students' reviews, and some students do that, some you know you'll have an opportunity to do that. Uh, you'll hear me notice. You'll hear me sort of working out how they did some of their um, some of their images because when you know these characteristics, once you've learned um, the, the basics of how these things work, it it actually isn't terribly difficult to sort of just break down how somebody has has prepared the lighting for a studio shot. Uh, the sun um, is is. Uh, a little bit more tricky because the sun is such a big light source, but you can oftentimes tell also where, where that's coming from. Um, but in a studio shot, a lot of times, unless they're using incredibly soft lights, um, you can usually break down how they did it. And so um, your solutions, putting down what, what you've done, is an important thing in the learning process because when you discover a lighting solution, and these are puzzles for you to solve, but when you discover a lighting solution that is satisfying, that you really like, you'll want to be able to do it again. And until you can, just by sight, be able to mimic something, you'll want to take notes. You'll want to know, okay, that's position six, and then the fill light is at 10%, and stuff like that, to be able to, 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 to reproduce something when, when you want to be able to do that. All of your exposures look pretty good. Uh, in other words, you don't have too many images that are overly dark or overly light. We call that overexposed or underexposed. Underexposed would be too dark. Overexposed would be too light. Um, they all look pretty good there. Um, let's now look at uh, some of the accuracies. This does look like it is uh, position eight. You've got the light to the side here. Um, position seven, a little bit farther around. Position six, yeah. So all of that's looking pretty good. Believe it or not, not everybody is getting that, uh, getting that spot on. Um, compositionally, um, what I tend to look at with the compositions, in other words, the arrangement of everything uh, within, your, within your frame, how you're organizing things through the viewfinder, um, I, I want to see that you're paying attention to everything, uh, all of the edges of your uh, viewfinder. Uh, things, you, things shouldn't just be living in one place, like in the middle or over in the corner or something like that. You want to be addressing everything. Photography, unlike some other mediums, is subtractive. So you start with the whole world and then you start reducing down as soon as you put the camera up to your, uh, up to your face and you start framing things. So within that frame, you want to be highly selective. So when you're, when I say addressing the whole picture frame, the space between this cork and the edge of your image, this space right here is deliberate. It's very important that you are paying attention to the tension there. Is it equal in terms of the shape and the distance as the width of this cork, or at least the width of this highlight? 
doing that or not doing that will affect the way that people view the tension of this space, whether it has tension or doesn't have tension, whether it feels like it belongs in that, in that uh, space or not. So it's all very important. You start to become more intuitive about it, where you're not having to, you know, uh, be, be so, uh, I guess, uh, consciously aware of all of these things. You start to do them un unconsciously, balance things, and just automatically start to find relationships like that. But uh, at first, it does take practice. Until you've trained your, your eye to be able to find those things automatically, you want to pay attention to them. And it looks like maybe intuitively you are paying attention to them, or maybe that's just your nature. You're looking at those things. But otherwise, good job on those. You're um, able to organize spaces. It looks like you're setting things up and you're then framing them within the uh, within the picture frame fairly well. Not everyone can make photography or do images where things are set up this way. Some people really just have to scatter things on the table and just find compositions that way. Uh, I haven't gone through absolutely all your stuff, so maybe you're going to do that later on. But um, so far with these more uh, deliberate constructions, you're doing a good job. Things like this where there's the light and then the shadow and the light, those are really spectacular when you're doing those. You've got all the accuracy down. Um, again, when you're allowing the light to sort of take on a character of its own. This was a really good idea when you have the light over to the side. You're allowing the shadows to really play a role in the composition. Photographers use shadows uh, you know, just as much as they use highlights and all of the others. This one is always an epic looking image. It always looks like some sort of Stonehenge or, you know, uh, space landing. Um, so it, it, it always has that feel because it just has this massive, uh, you know, this massive light. And that, that perspective that you're using is, is, is helping as well to kind of give you, to give you that. So let's just jump down here to intensity. Intensity where you add the fill light. Uh, now what we should see is the direction, but now you're able to then supplement the shadows, add a little bit of light there into the shadows. And yes, I'm seeing, now you're doing that sort of pile-on kind of composition. And you're still handling it pretty well, I'd say. Um, these angles, while a bit dissonant, you're still creating a bit of a rhythm. Here you got one, two, three. Here you've got the cork, one, two, the logic would be another cork would be somewhere up here because you're setting up what's called a progressive rhythm there. That's really a good, a good strategy. This sort of breaks up that rhythm so it feels a little bit more balanced. What you're doing here, hopefully you're conscious of it, but what you're doing here is you're using the principles of design, the principles of composition. You likely heard of them in your 2D design or your drawing class. You're applying them here to photography. They work just the same. It doesn't, doesn't go away just because you're using a different medium. In fact, they can be more uh, helpful when you're using um, photography because, as I was saying, every little space is, is addressed uh, in that picture plane. What, what's different here when you start to use that secondary light is trying to find the balance because you don't want your images to suddenly become flat because you're filling in the shadows too much. So you do want to leave these dark areas there, which it seems like you're, you're paying attention to that. So I would say yes, that, that's in, in good shape there too. Um, moving into your temperature, this is where for a lot of students, it starts to get a little bit tricky um, or a little bit heavy in terms of things to think about. You've got now, you've got the lights, you've got maybe two lights going on, you've got um, the temperature of those lights to be able to shift the color of them, the intensity of those lights, turning them on 100% or 80% or whatnot. And now you have the camera and you're starting to manipulate the white balance on there. What happens is with a lot of students is they start to, well, something gives, <laughs> something starts to go away. They, they, they're thinking about all these other things and one of them starts to fall off. And sometimes it's the compositions. Uh, sometimes it's the uh, quality of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the lighting, but it, it looks like you're you're still paying attention to the same stuff. So your attention to detail is still being maintained. We have a couple of images here that are very close to one another. 
try to avoid that in the future. Uh, when you have images that are very close to one another, like this one and this one, uh, even in their color tone, it, it tends to look a little redundant. So I would discourage you from, from posting those in the future like that. Uh, these images is a little bit different with, because you have variations of them, even though I still would have liked to have seen them as different compositions. Um, I'm not going to ding you terribly for something like that here because we're just getting to know what the expectations are and things like that. If it sounds like I'm giving lots of compliments, I am because I think the, the, your, your posting is, is, is quite good. Uh, you've done a, an excellent job on, 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 these, uh, uh, on these elements. You know, it, it, does, it does get a little bit difficult sometimes when we start to run out of things to do with these. Uh, and it's, it's by design. You know, I'm giving you a, a subject to work with that is deliberately irrelevant. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean anything to you. It doesn't mean anything to anybody. It's just painted shapes, basically. And so the, the idea is to make them irrelevant. It's not about taking pictures of bottles. It's not about what the bottles mean. They're, it's just formal exercise. And so doing stuff like this, where you're just going to try to create shapes and balances, it's totally good. Uh, here it gets a little self-conscious, like, well, what do I do? I'm going to put two corks together. And that's fine. Not all of them are going to ring, you know, super supreme. But, you know, you got to try something sometimes, right? Keep experimenting like this. Um, here it just feels a little bit self-conscious. So um, I'm just pointing that out, not, not as a criticism, but as an observation that it just, you know, some of them work, some of them don't work as well. I think this one works a little bit better because it seems less like you're trying to force a, a composition. The other one seems like, well, what do I do? I'm going to sit these on top of each other. It's okay, though. Uh, we're, we're experimenting here, and this is the environment to do it, right? Um, so contrast, that's where we're working with the reflections. Uh, the reflecting card is, is a valuable tool. Once you start using it, you'll find that you don't want to ever stop using it. You use it all the time. Uh, in my photography, I tend to use uh, very few lights, actually. Uh, sometimes I'm using just natural lighting coming through a window, uh, reflecting cards and diffusers. That's sometimes all I'm using. Uh, sometimes I'm using artificial lighting when, when I don't have proper light. But um, the reflecting card, what it does is, is of course, redirects the light. Um, it catches whatever light that you're using and then moves it back into the scene. You can be a lot of different surfaces. I demonstrated the silver and the white, but it could be colors. You could use red, you could use blue, um, it could be gold, so you can get a warm tone reflected back into the scene. All kinds of different things. Even outside, you can use mirrors and you're literally turning a light on. Um, it's like a secondary light that happens. It's kind of cool. Um, so, in the studio here, what we're trying to explore is how to redirect light and how to control it. And that's what this is all about. So, you know, situations like this where you're able to, you know, throw light back in, even in these real subtle spots, we make a little small reflecting card and catch light and just bounce it off in this little, little bitty area there. It's magic sometimes when you see that happen. Explore it some more because of the, the, the uh, the reflecting card, it's a cheap tool, you know, it's a whatever, $3 for a piece of foam board at, at uh, Target or whatever, and you've got a professional tool that you can use for just about anything. Um, but reflecting is all about controlling contrast, or in other words, putting more tones between the highlights and the shadows so that you're controlling how many tones are there and controlling whether you have lots of contrast, meaning there's very few shades between white and black and low, low contrast where there's, it's a very subtle uh, transition between one and the other. The last of the five are the hardness. And the hardness is all about the shadows. That's what we're paying attention to here. And it's specifically, um, uh, uh, you know, about the shadows because it's dealing with the nature of them. It's dealing with the edges. A hard shadow uh, gives you a certain sense, a certain feel, and a soft shadow does just that too. It also does affect some of the other areas, but it really what it's doing is it's taking the transition from the, the middle of the shadow and its edges and effectively like feathering them off. 
And so you can get these beautiful transitions, these very soft transitions, or the other way around with a very hard light, no dis no dis uh, uh, nothing disrupting it, uh, and you'll get these very graphic looking images that are, can be very powerful uh, when you're um, uh, when you're using it. So when you have something like this, where I mean clearly it's it's a diffused light source, and the reason we know it's a diffused light source is we're looking at the bottles. We can see where the light is hitting it here and here, and you can see that the edge of, the, of those shadows, the edge of the shadow here, is soft. There's not a hard line there. Even over here, where you have a fill light coming in, you can see that that is soft here. If there was no diffusion on there, that would be a hard, crisp edge. So even if you hadn't written that both of them were diffused, we would be able to figure that out anyway, because we could just look at the shadow areas and determine that. This is a nice image. You're using shallow depth of field. Uh, you're getting really low perspective here using texture. Uh, it's a good strategy. Uh, you're playing around. I like this, the sense that you're sort of moving around the set and, and, and trying to find out what you can see. Um, you know, in some cases you're setting something up very deliberately like this, and in other cases you are attempting to find a composition within something that's already there. Keep exploring that. Keep kind of trying to, to, to break the boundary of, um, uh, of composition, of, of what these objects are. The objects that we use in the class are largely just things to interrupt the light. Uh, we use the bottles for the project we're working on now as you're watching the video, the aesthetics and control. We're using those old bones. We're going to use pine cones because they uh, sort of transmit light. You, they have all of these gaps and holes in them. They, they work very well for that. So we're using stuff that really don't have a whole lot of intrinsic meaning to, to you uh, or me or, or most people, but we're using them as a, as a, a sort of a... a um, sort of as a resource to bend light and to shape shadows and things like that. So um, excellent work. Uh, you'll get a grade form. I, I have a, a sort of an index card type of grade form that I hand out to everybody. And uh, you did an excellent job on this project. Uh, I mentioned a few things that we could, we could work on, but overall, I think you're in a really good place right now with your photography. And I look forward to seeing uh, what you do in the future. All right, we'll see you in the studio. Bye-bye now.